Yay. So if I say something. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. So um, welcome back everyone to the Badass CEO. This is Mimi. And today I have Nadine Crocker and she's a director, writer, actress, and producer. Her debut feature, Continue, will be re released in 2021. And Continue is based on a Nadine's life and true story of surviving a suicide attempt when she was 23. I've had the opportunity to see Nadine's journey of producing Continue, and I'm so excited to have her here today to get a unique insight into the entertainment industry. And I like to think of a producer, director, kind of as a, their own CEO. And so that's kind of why I wanted to bring you on today to kind of talk about how you put together this entire movie from idea to the end. And um, so I'm so excited to have you on today, Nadine. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, so how did you decide to actually, because you were an actress at first, so how did you actually decide to start like creating, directing, and producing your own movie? I always knew that part of my journey eventually was going to be telling my own stories. You know, I, um, I just, I knew that I had a lot of things that I wanted to say and a lot of the subjects I want to talk about. So I knew eventually I would get to that. Um, and then as I've battled depression and anxiety and, and, you know, mental health battles, I, just became more and more passionate about it and felt like the more that I talked to people about my story in particular of, you know, battling depression pretty, pretty badly. And then, um, you know, eventually trying to take my own life. And it, it just came, it just kept sitting there and sitting there. And I knew that I needed to tell the story. I knew, knew that I needed to talk about these subjects because I felt like no one was also, which is so isolating when you're going through those things and you're like okay so no one talks about it there's no you know films about it there's not a lot of places you can go for this subject matter and I just uh you know I've always hated that stigma and so that kind of I think is what stemmed it and then there was a lot of self-doubt of like you know I'm an actress no one's going to take me serious as a writer and then I just had to say f that and and I was really hard on myself with the script and just going over it and over it and many different drafts to make it the best thing it could be. And then, um, you know, I started sending it out and I heard a lot of people and I got a lot of notes coming back saying, no one wants to talk about this. No one wants to talk about mental health. No one's going to like, it's really hard because the movie's not out yet. So I can't talk about a lot of the things about the film, <laughs> like, which you know about, you know, like, some of our um, bigger moments in the film and different things like that. But I got a lot of notes back that, you know, people weren't going to like it and um, that it was heavy and people don't want that. And I just strongly disagreed and basically was like, F that. I'm not, I, okay, I'm going to make this myself. And it became what, like an eight, by the time now that it's made, what, eight or nine year journey of writing, uh, going back to the drawing board, getting it tighter and tighter and tighter than trying to attach uh, producers, trying to attach funds, you know, and, and just then the journey came and the perfect people came along. And uh, I, I always say that the universe had it happen exactly when it was meant to, you know, but that's, that's what stemmed it. I wanted to tell stories and I wanted to talk about things that people don't want to talk about. I think that's the stuff we're supposed to make movies about. I think that's the stuff that we have to be brave enough to be the first to bring it up then, you know? So I just knew that that was my mission and above all else, I really wanted to help people. Um, you know, I really wanted to just share my story in particular that, you know, not that life got perfect after those, those really dark years and that suicide attempt, but I was alive and my life has turned into something I would have never imagined. Like, as you know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm all of these things. I'm a director now, I'm a <laughs> producer. I'm all the things that I always wanted to be. And had I not had the courage to continue on through, that was <laughs> pun intended, uh, or not intended, mm -hmm. but I love it. But through that and wanting to, and through continuing on, I've, I've found this life and this just, yeah, a life I never would have imagined possible, honestly. That's awesome. That's great. So it sounds like it was much harder than you would typically have thought just because of the subject matter. So you think it was a different subject matter. If it was a romantic comedy and you wrote a romantic comedy, it would have been an easier sell per se? I mean, 
Uh, maybe. I honestly, they say statistically, like getting your movie made in Hollywood is like winning the lottery. It's like there are so many filmmakers in Los Angeles. There are so many dreamers. There's so many actors, you know. So it's a really hard process. They say if you get your mm-hmm. film made, period, like you've done something that so many filmmakers might not get the opportunity to do. So it's already a really hard thing to mm-hmm. have this idea and give people this idea on paper and then for them to see the vision that you see in your head because it's like you can't translate all of that to this page, to these this paper. And then on top of that, everyone's so crazy about page count. And so you can't be overly descriptive. You can't be, you know, it's just like Mm -hmm. this weird world that you live in. And so it's a hard process period, but the subject matter is definitely what made it harder for me. I'd say, I'm saying like, and, and also I, um, my name didn't mean anything, you know, I'm, I've been acting and I've been, uh, working as an actor and, and, and able to not always, but pay my bills primarily now through creative endeavors but um so that's the other thing about this town is a lot of times they want um they want a name they want someone that they're they know that their money is going to be safe with because that's a recognizable name and most people want people they recognize you know so you know that's also a hard process I think if you have a script and you have someone attached and um it can make your world a lot easier but yeah my subject matter didn't help I think that I was the first time writer, director, you know, is scary. And they're like, well, you're an actress. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm also going to be other things. So, (laughs) you know, I just got to make you believe that, you know? Right. Now, so now that the whole process is pretty much complete, what would you say the hardest part was looking back? (sighs) Um, I would definitely still say per, holy shit. I mean, getting everything together to get the movie made was a really hard process obviously you know nearly nine years it's a long time but really going through the whole process the hardest part was production because everything that could go wrong did you know we'd show up to the location and just that morning the elevator broke and we're filming on the roof you know and so my crew is pulling up gear off the side of the building and you know um then the bathrooms break <laughs> and then so we don't have a single bathroom in this entire set and we're having to get you know a, a trailer there and and all the things and it's just like everything that could go wrong does and did I got a face infection during filming which yeah, I don't even tooth, know you, too, yeah your yeah, tooth you infection remember? yeah yes. my tooth infection which then spreads to my face and I'm on camera but by the pure graces of God a permit fell through so we had to move our Thursday filming to a Saturday and when I woke up that Thursday morning, I had to go to an emergency dentist because my face had like swollen. So it's like one of those things where I also say like, I think it could go wrong did, but God was like, I'm gonna throw you a bone or it always worked out to be like a hundred times better than the location that fell through or just whatever. Like, you know, it was supposed to cost us a, a lot of money to go to San Francisco and to film all of that stuff. And then we find this epic location with the most beautiful view of the of the bridge and they let us have that just to rent a room because of the subject matter and because I basically went that, down there I'm very tenacious and I'm very passionate I was just like listen I need you and then they ended up working with us and so things always came through but it was also like for me like a very Scorpio control like just want you know this is my baby so like it was really hard being so out of control and just having to have pure faith. I'm like, okay, it's all going to work out. It's going to happen. We're going to make it through this. And it always did. And I also had an amazing team around me, you know, my producer, Jay, my DP, Cy, you, you know, everyone, I had such great support. So that's definitely how I got through that. But yeah, I'd say that was definitely the hardest process. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I want to touch a base on, on what you were just talking about with your, your cast and your crew, because they were amazing people. And so you kind of put together a, a mini company in a sense, like that, you know, that lasted for a year. And that's how I like to look at movies kind of is like you put together these companies that only last for a year or two years or six months, however long the whole process is, and then it's gone. Right. So, um, how did you quote unquote hire? How did you find these people? And what was like the common, you know, cause I know you met a lot of people and you kind of, of so what was that common link or what were you looking for? What were the attributes you were looking for in those people? Um, honestly, it was just like all, 
gut and heart and I'm a very like emotional empathetic like I and I'm very hard on my sleeve so it was just kind of like if I just didn't beat around the bush I'm like hey this is my baby this is my story like and how they would um receive it and how it affected them often was what made me go yes or I'm not sure maybe you're great but just this not this one because I knew it was going to be a strenuous uh project I knew it we did we had a very limited funds for such an ambitious script and we had very limited days for such an ambitious script so um I knew that I needed people whose heart was going to be fully in this and it just so happened um that almost every person from the crew from my producers from everyone I have chills right now um had a connection to suicide and had a strong connection to mental health but but primarily a big connection with suicide so it was almost as if these people found me and just I'd be sitting across from them and I'd be like you're my person like I just know it and and it so it all <laughs> yeah so it all it all kind of came together in that way and just like really going from my heart and and also being very very picky in the first place to who I'd sit down with and um the photos they'd bring you know for what they envisioned or different things because I'm very collaborative collaborative as a filmmaker and as an actor and you know I um <laughs> I love um I love hearing other people's vision and I and I love I wanted to make sure that anyone that I brought on I had utter and the utmost trust like okay I'm not going to be able to micromanage every human being I need creatives that I can fully trust in this process because I'm wearing 900 hats which was a very <laughs> hard thing to do with such an emotional piece you know I'm I'm led in it directed it produced it I mean you name it I probably was craft service a day like <laughs> you name it I just I, I I wore a million hats so I knew I needed a bunch of badasses basically around me <laughs> you know I thought was amazing with I mean you did have a lot an unbelievable amount of love and everyone was there definitely mm. for a common good right I feel like and um, you didn't really touch on this, but I, I want to highlight it that you got a lot of people to um, work for less and you had a lot of people that, you know, even gave you less pricing for, you know, renting cars or renting locations. Yeah. And, and I think that, that speaks to you, obviously, and your passion, but also to the, the, the subject matter, right? Because mm -hmm. mental health has been such a huge um I think it's finally coming to the forefront of the conversation. And I think it still needs to come to the forefront of the conversation, especially in light of COVID. I mean, that has not even ever been addressed yet right now. And I think it's going to continue to completely devastate um, our younger generations too. You know, like just seeing these kids sitting in front of a computer all day long doing schoolwork. I mean, there's got to be some psychological effects to that yeah. that we haven't even seen yet. But going back to the continue movie, I just feel like, I would love for you to just kind of touch on that, like how you were able to, um, because I think other CEOs, no matter what their cause is, be like, be creative, right? And, and take yeah. bootstrap what you have, if that's your passion and don't say no and just figure out ways if it's bartering, if it's using. So can you just speak to that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I mean, I touched on a little bit, like I'm extremely tenacious and I don't take no easily. And I, I just don't give up. It's just been my nature. And since I was young, I'm stubborn. Um, so, you know, I, I just wasn't afraid to ask. I wasn't afraid to tell people I have, you know, $10 in two days, basically like not enough money and not enough days. I need your help to make this film possible. This is my story. This is what I'm trying to do. I think also the fact that I'm, I donated a, a personal percentage of my points in the back end to charity and I had already explained to them that that's what I was going to do and that um, I I made my own nonprofit to coincide with the film the continue on foundation so um, you know if we received any donations from that that's going to go to getting people the help they need and also to fund more mental health projects that's my goal for the um, nonprofit where I'm kind of still developing it I've got fiscally sponsored and developing it now and figuring out kind of what my thing is going to be like what makes 
my foundation different. And the truth is, is I don't know that it's going to be all that different. I just want to get more help for people. So, you know, there's also going to be different nonprofits that I partner with and um, get without getting too far into that. I, so people saw that it wasn't just about making this movie at all. It was, it was about telling this story. It was about breaking the stigma. It was about trying to save lives. It was about raising money for charity. So I think when people see that and then, and I'm telling this and I'm, then I'm also speaking from the heart, half the time I'm probably really emotional. Cause like I said, I very much wear my heart on my sleeve and I just wasn't afraid to just utterly and completely show myself and just hope that it was accepted, you know? And I think that that's the number one thing I could recommend to any CEO or any, um, you know, filmmaker or person out there trying to achieve their dreams is like, you have to show people what makes you different. And I think that what made this film so different and what made people want to give us these deals and wheel and deal and okay, fine, we'll give you this, but you know, for this fraction of the price, which is not what we normally do because we know you're not going to stop asking. <laughs> also, it's like, you know, my mental, and we filmed in an active mental institution. That was heavy and that was hard and it was also strenuous for the mental institution like for all of the people who run that facility um so and their price was i mean we could never afford it like never and i got them down to like a shockingly low price and they did it and it was like people like that it just i I think I, they knew I wasn't going to give up easily. And then by the time I got on the phone with them, they could hear my passion. And I just, I wasn't afraid to ask. And I wasn't afraid to just tell them who I truly was and why I was truly doing it. And I think people connect to that. They want to be part of something real. They want to be part of something special and that, that helps people. And, and I think that if you can keep your heart in the right place and remember why you're always doing what it is that you're doing, doors will open for you. You know, I, every time before I would go into a scene or anything that I would do, I would say a prayer basically for the person who's in pain that whatever my performance was supposed to be for them. And I did that with everything before I went in there. Like, you know, I, I just try to constantly keep my mind on the mission rather than all the other shit because all the other stuff just gets heavy and it's, <laughs> new things come up, you know. But if I tried to keep my mind in the positive and, and that, you know, it, it led me to the right places. That's great. That's great. You definitely touched on this, but if someone were going to pick up, move across the country and go to Hollywood to try to make it, if it's acting, writing, producing, directing, what suggestion, knowing what you know about the industry and how it's changing so much, um, what would you suggest for them? I mean, you definitely already had the contacts because of your acting, but you also had to start somewhere. So what would you suggest somebody who's starting from scratch? What should they do? Well, I mean, the first thing I'll say is we all start from scratch. So like, you're no different than anyone else. And I dropped out of high school when I was 16. And I moved to LA on my own. And I was 16, 17, I officially was fully living here by 17. I mean, in LA by 17. And, um, and worked three jobs. And, you know, I didn't come from, we were always very modest upbringing. So it was like, I had to, if I wanted to stay down there, I had to figure out a way. And, and it's not easy. And what I would say is like, first know that your heart won't be happy unless this is what you're doing. And if you know that your heart will not be happy doing anything else, then you have to come. There's no other choice. And when you get here, don't give up. That's all I can truly, truly say. It's taken me, I mean, what, six, 15, 16 years. I'm about to turn 32 and I have, I, it's taken this long. But the difference between me and maybe other people who exist out there is that I wasn't willing to give up. I wasn't willing to go home. People have asked me, when, when is it time that you finally go, okay, I'm tired of working three jobs and living down there and, and feeling this pain every time it's a lot of rejection, which is why it can be really hard on your heart, you know, and your mental state and, you know, kind of having that feeling of not being enough. And, and the industry will always tell you you're not enough, not pretty enough, too pretty, this, that, you know, and the truth is, is you just have to know inside your heart, like that this is what you're meant to be doing. And 
for me, I knew that no matter what, even if I didn't make it as an actor to this place that we all hope we're going to get to, I would always be an actor. I would be doing some profession, but I would always be acting, doing theater, doing something. I knew I couldn't live without it. So for me, there was no, I'll go home at 10 years. I'll go home at whatever years. And thank God there wasn't because 16 years later, I'm finally getting the opportunities I've dreamt of doing since I was a 16 year old kid, you know? So, I mean, my number one is like, don't go home. You have no other choice. Like you have to stay here and you have to fight it out. And eventually, you know, that's what they say, right? Uh, in a 10 year span, at some point, everyone will get the same opportunity. You know, you'll finally find yourself in the same rooms if you, if you stay long enough. I, I totally spotted that quote, but you know, it's basically just saying if you'll, you'll end up at least getting some of the opportunities other people do if you stay long enough, if you mm -hmm. don't give up. And is it about networking? Like you show up and then you just kind of try to network to find an agent to then get you in the door. Is that like, yeah, like reps, I'll, I'll say reps are, are really, um, you need auditions. So whatever mm -hmm. gets you auditions, because you are going to go to thousands of auditions and you're going to book about 10 of them. You know, it's like, you look at my, my resume, I've auditioned for some of the biggest movies and shows that have existed that I still like, I'm like, Oh God, that would have been so good. You know? Right, like, right. You can I, see yourself there. Yeah. Where I'm like, Oh, I still remember. I still know the lines that she's saying it on the thing. Like, Oh God, oh. I remember this one, you know, and you'll go through thousands of them and you'll get 14 or 15, you know? And and that's the point. You need auditions. So yeah, reps are always my networking. Yes, rep, but reps and class and studying. Um, I think that the thing that really sets you apart as an actor, if you're a serious actor, is um, you're never not acting. I was always in class, even when I couldn't afford it. I'd, I'd get that over like food. I'd live on top of ramen so that I could be in class and constantly learning. And even now, I'm never not learning. I'm never not in class or getting coaching. I mean, you met my acting coach. My coach was with me every day on set. It doesn't matter where you go. It's for me, I'll always want to be better. I'll, I'll, I'll never stop trying to learn to get to that next level, that next level. And with my art, because it's what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I think, yes, networking, finding reps, but also if you're so good and you are so committed to your work, eventually someone is going to see that, you know? And I think, yes, find reps because you need auditions and then study and study and, and get your 10,000 hours, you know? Mm -hmm. They say, yeah, 10,000 to become a master at something, get those, you know? Mm -hmm. it, because that's what will also set you aside. There's a lot of people in this town and I don't like to talk, you know, badly about anyone in the business. We're all you know, we're all struggling. We're all trying to make it at this thing, but there's a lot, there's a difference between a lot of um, creatives or, you know, CEOs even where they call themselves a, an actor or an entrepreneur or whatever. And they're out networking every night, drinking and doing the thing and doing the dance. But even when they get those opportunities, if you're not in class and you're not working your ass off, like, you know what I mean? There's a, the product will always show the skill will always show. Like if you are putting those hours in and you are making yourself the best you can possibly be, it's going to show, you know? So, mm -hmm. so yeah, get auditions, do all of that, but just work on your craft so much that people can't say no eventually. That's what I was always trying to get to. I want to be so good that they can't say no. Even if I'm not the name they need for the, selling the film, like I want to be so good that they're like, I can't, I, she has to get it, you know, and I'm still working every day to try and to, to get better and better and better. That's great advice. So do you see yourself going on to be concentrating more on acting, producing, writing, directing, like where all, all of it? That's the, that's the question of everyone right now. I've just received three offers for films to direct, to direct. So. Oh, really? Congratulations. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, I just got uh, several offers that came through for um, new films to direct. I just finished my next script that I plan to direct that I wrote, um, which is about the first year of parenthood and um, how hard and beautiful and life-changing it all is. Um, but 
for that process, I'm going to have another child and go on that journey over a year progression. So I'm kind of trying to put my own scripts off for another couple of years. Yeah, so yeah. I'm now really reading other people's material and, and I have some other written ones um, as well. So I'm just deciding really what the next move is. But um, it's funny, acting will always be my heart and I'm actually, and I'm mid talking about some other acting projects right now too. So we'll see what happens with those. They're, but they're very exciting and I'm trying not to like, I'm trying to just be like, okay, we'll see what the universe brings to me. But um, yeah, I, acting will always be, my passion it's it's what I love but I, I really found like I found my purpose through directing um and that's why I'm very very picky about what I'll direct not in the sense of just because like I think I'm you know fancy and oh I have to be picky no it's that I I really won't tell a story unless my 100% heart and passion is in it because I know that that's half of why the film continue came together and pure magic is because when your heart is so fully involved in that people want to give you their heart too so my heart has to fully be in a project for me to get a year of my life because directing is a year acting is a month or two sometimes six months you know you never know how long or big the project is but directing is a year or or more of your life so my heart has to be in it but uh also I'm very very particular about the film has to have a message why am I telling it and so I'm in this process of like knowing that those are the few things that um, that I need to have to fuel me. So I'm just I'm really reading and taking my time right now. But I do think that directing is going to be where my my heart kind of takes off and writing. I mean, I love I love telling stories. I love there's just too many stories to tell. We all go through so much bullshit as human beings and we have so much, you know, so many experiences and so much trauma and so many there's just so much shit that we all got to start talking about and I feel like that's why we need to make movies to, to say something otherwise sometimes they're to entertain but even a romantic comedy can have a message you know mm-hmm. no it's very true um it's very true now last question um you worked with your husband he was on set with you he was an, an actor in the movie yeah. um and your support system so how was that? Like, how did that, like working with your husband on set, um, did it make you guys stronger? Was it trying? Um, he's my biggest fan and he is my biggest supporter. I can say that with the utmost, like, I love him and he loves me dearly. I couldn't do any of it without his support. He gets more excited than me sometimes at the things that are happening, you know, like where I'm like trying to stay calm and he's like, no, like you can't stay calm. You know, he's just like, he's my cheerleader and he's the best. Um, uh, and so all during continue, I just think the overwhelming pride, like he had just like, it trumped everything even the struggles because it was I'm sure really hard I mean his wife who is normally his everyday companion his best friend we do everything together was just like absent you know I would make it home in time to put my son to sleep at, at least a couple nights a week but I was gone before they woke up and I was gone by the time they went to sleep most days because pre-production and production and our production hours were so crazy so it was definitely hard and I think it was hard for him because continue is such a beautiful love story so you have this person that you love so much missing for a lot of it. And then when you get to come and be part of it, you watch them on screen constantly being in love with someone else. <laughs> and so I'm, sh I, I saw it every once in a while, like, I just missed my wife. And I'm like, I'm here. I love you. You know, so it was, it was definitely hard, but, but our hardest thing of all of it was me directing him as him, him an actor and me director, mm -hmm. because he'd get frustrated or um yeah frustrated is the main way I can describe it or frustrated with himself and and let's be honest who do you as a human take things out on when you're frustrated your spouse mm -hmm. your closest person like I'm so guilty of that so he'd be frustrated and then he'd start talking to me as if I was his wife and like kind of like you know, not that he ever like argues, but he'd be like, well, I need the, and then like Jay, who is our producing partner is also one of his best friends. That's how I know Jay is through my husband. And Jay'd be like, this isn't your wife. This is our director. Let's, let's <laughs> take a breath and let's remember that we don't talk to her like our wife. We talk to her like our director. And he's like, I know, but it's hard. And I, so it's hard. It's hard, it's hard. to, 
because like, you know, you're used to being able to like fight, you know, butt heads with your, your spouse, like we all do. And, and, but I couldn't be the supporting wife. I had to be that. I don't give a shit. You have had this many takes. I have no time. I have seven scenes to go do it. Get, you know? get it together. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember it's sitting so next hard. to him. I remember sitting next to him during the screening and, and I don't know if that was the first time he's seen the movie or not, but it was the first time I saw the movie. And so we're sitting there and your love scene came on and it wasn't with him. <laughs> and I was sitting there like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I don't know if it's uncomfortable for me or him. Like, him yeah. And he was probably like, <laughs> be red. And I'm probably in the back of the theater like, this somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was interesting. I'm like, I've never been in this situation like this where I'm actually watching the movie with the two spouses in the same room. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I think that is, that's always definitely, um, it's always a definitely one where I see his face get a little bit red because it's also like, not just that it's me with someone else, but it's also like his wife, like, and yeah. everyone's looking at his wife, you know? And, yeah. and luckily because he thinks it's so beautifully shot, like he's still very supportive of it. Cause he's like, well, it's just so beautiful and silhouetted and you look so stunning. And so like, he gets past that because the filmmaker in him is like, it's just so well done that I can't even like be upset about it, you know? <laughs> so, oh, that's awesome. No, he's such he's a great such a guy. He's, <laughs> yeah. And he's good. So where are you like, um, it's done, you're finished. Where, where are we at? And let, let people know when they can start watching it or give yeah. everyone kind of an update what's going on. Well, so right now we're submitted to, um, Sundance. We are, uh, we are almost finished. It's completely finished as of next week. We have actually the, um, color is still, but I don't know it. Uh, who did the Joker, uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, all the John Wicks, Doctor Sleep. I mean, a huge, 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 huge film. It's like the fact that she did my film, I'm still kind of like pinching myself. I got to work with her this week and just, we're working remotely. So I'm working from a computer who has her on Zoom and then uh, an iPad that's linked to her system and I'm getting to watch her work and it's just like, my mind is exploding honestly just it, it the film went to a whole next level it's so beautiful she is such a magician and an artist and so we finish our color uh next week or she finishes the color next week and then once that's finished we drop it in and we finish put all the last finishing touches on and then it's completely finished but right now it's already submitted to Sundance so Sundance is my goal that's where I really my heart has always been where I thought um I thought it would shine but we'll see COVID has really made festivals funky and festivals that normally take 300 applicants are taking 50 I mean TIFF took I think only 50 this year which and they normally take around like 300 so you know, I have no idea what that's going to mean for submissions and who's selected. I also have no idea if it's going to go all digital or if there will be any in person. So um, Cassie Nelways, who is my EP and um, my mentor and my dearest friend, and I love him so much, so much. Um, he did Dallas Buyers Club, Blue Valentine. I mean, he's just a genius. And um, he is our EP, but he's also selling the phone. So, um, you know, it's just kind of where we see what distribution deal comes together, if we end up doing a festival route or if we're gonna go just to getting it out into the world. We're just kind of trying to finish it and then see what what our gut and what the universe, what opportunities come to us and what is meant to happen, you know, whether we will end up getting to premiere at a festival or whether we're just gonna get out into the world. I do have this really, really strong belief that with COVID and everything that's happening in the world, people need this message more than ever. Uh, the huge reaction we got from the teaser alone um, and the messages that flooded in and um, it was quite overwhelming. I was like in tears for like three days straight, truthfully, because it was just like hearing people what just that teaser meant to them. And especially during these dark times and this, and suicide hotlines and the text crisis hotline and all of their calls are like through the roof. They don't even have enough people right now to even address all of the people who are calling. So uh, I think we're going to see a huge increase in depression and, and I hope not suicide, but I, I mean, we, we, 
we're just hearing that people are feeling really dark and really and really lost right now and I think we all are feeling that a little bit and hopeless sometimes 2021 has been a little bit rough you know so I just I feel like whatever's meant to happen will happen and we got to get it out there and we got to let people know that they're not alone you know so I'm hoping I'm hoping theaters but we don't even know how American cinema is gonna go people you know I think that Tenet coming out this this month I think yeah it's about to come out um it's like one of the first big blockbusters to come out into theaters so I think we'll see if people get back in the theaters I think we'll see what's gonna happen like you know we don't even every filmmaker's dream is to get a distribution deal where they get theaters and VOD and release on the computers and TVs and all of that and um there isn't even really theaters right now like and it's not really safe so you know or it's or they're figuring out ways for it to be safe. I don't want to say that it's not safe, but they're figuring out a new normal. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to see what happens, you know, if, if theaters aren't safe and, and people aren't going, then get it out into the world and let them watch it on their TV. You know, it's like, they won't get to see how it looks on a massive screen, but you know, maybe one day we'll get to do that. You know, I just, I I think we're in this beautiful, I, I know that le- for me personally, I'm really, really lucky. And I, I don't even, I don't even know if you know this, but we clipped export on our edit and that week quarantine hit and our, the entire building, our post office was in was shut down. No one was allowed in or out. So had I not finished right then, had the movie not come together and filmed right when it was supposed to, had I taken the t- time off that I was planning to, which is like, we finished on, the week of Thanksgiving on like a Tuesday, uh, Thanksgiving was on a Thursday. That following Monday, I was just going in to meet my editor and then was like, no, let's just start. I need to dive in. And so I never took any time off. I just went straight into editing. My plan was originally to take like a month away from it and then come in and that didn't work. And thank God I didn't do that because we edited it in time to get out before COVID hit and then um, be able to work remotely after. So it, I know a lot of people personally who were shut down mid filming, who were shut down mid editing. And so they're trying to do it remotely and it remotely sucks. It's like working mm-hmm. remote sometimes sucks. You don't get to feel the person next to you. You don't get to, you know, be able to chat and, and um, vibe together. So, you know, it's, uh, it's hard. And I, I really sympathize with filmmakers out there and CEOs and, people who are having to learn this new normal you know I I can I can really sympathize and relate with them and and I got really lucky that we got to this place and that we were able to finish the film so my thing is is like it's always worked out whatever the universe has wanted it's always somehow kind of worked out for our little engine that could so I just think it'll find its place but I yeah everyone please see it when it does come out and um yeah know that you're not alone if you are battling you know your inner demons and stuff so that's beautiful that's beautiful thank you I, I look forward to seeing the finished product and I'm oh sure gosh, everyone else does to too and um, it has been great to get to know you during this whole journey and I do hats off because you amaze me and everything that you did that you wanted to do you did and you didn't give yeah. up and um, I definitely think you will be rewarded for that and I, I, I can't wait yeah. to see what you do next so thank you Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. And then, so follow Nadine Crocker. She's an Insta- Is your Instagram like Nadine Crocker? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And um, then continue so, the film is also an Instagram too. So that we, that's what we'll be releasing a lot of, well, my, my Instagram's always all things continue, but we'll all, we also have the teaser there and we have all of the um, updates on both mine and there. And I just want to say to you, because I still have you for a second. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for your support. CEOs, entrepreneurs, people like you are the reason that I could live this dream and I couldn't have done it without you. So I just wanted to say that. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you so much. It's been, it's really has been, um, it's obviously a message that's dear to our family's heart. So it was definitely a moving process going through it um, and having even spending time on the set. And I think everyone I talked to at one point had had tried to take their life and uh, and thank God everyone there had, you know, did not succeed and they failed, which was a good fail. And, um, and, and they were there to, to tell the story and to, to move on and to kind of come together. So that was really moving to be a part of that and really try to 
understand, you know, and, and I thought the common theme, just for anyone who's still listening, the common theme I asked each of them, like, what do you think um, is the reason why you're still here today? And they all said, you need someone to talk to. So if anyone's listening and going through this pain right now, it's like, find somebody to talk to. Somebody is going to talk to you and tell them what's going on. Share it. Don't be embarrassed by it. Open up. Like you're not going to get better unless you have somebody you can confide in. And if you don't have somebody, go pay somebody. Like just talk to somebody. I was just about to say, don't be afraid of therapy. Don't be afraid. I have a life coach. I have a therapist. I have, Mm -hmm. I have a really great support system. I have sponsors because I'm also sober. I have all of the things, you know, Mm -hmm. and you need people to turn to keeping it all inside is only at some point going to become more and more suffocating. Like the people around me and those conversations are the air I needed to be able to breathe from that suffocation. You know, you, you, you have to just open up and you have to put yourself out there and it's really, really scary, but there is no other path. Otherwise Mm -hmm. you're just isolated. And the worst thing is isolation. You know, no one Mm -hmm. wants to feel utterly alone. So you just have to find your person, find someone safe to speak to. Mm-hmm. It's true. But um, thank you again for all you do. Thank and you. Um, good luck. I can't wait to see what happens. Go Sundance. Yay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Take care. You too.